and the napkin which was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. I want to use for a brief topic today, unfinished business. Dear Lord, we thank you, God. We praise you and we magnify your holy name. Bless in a mighty way, God, that some soul may be changed today. This is your day, Father. Resurrect some life that someone may know the Christ as their Savior. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Unfinished business. The earth was without the greatest hope that they had ever seen. Can you imagine the guilt that had must have been brewing inside of that Roman garrison as they stepped back for a moment and recollected the events when they arrested our Savior, arrested him by force, and there it was, our Savior Jesus put his ear and mended it back together proclaimed and brought back a memory to Peter that before you hear that rooster crow twice, you will have been denied me thrice. And Peter, full of guilt and, and just anguish and worrying, and Thomas had ran and scattered off and hiding away, and John just demoralized and built up with anguish, seeing that Savior allowing his shoulder to hold the head of Mary as she watched her son brutalize for the sin of mankind. What it felt like that day to know all the things that they were doing going well beyond the call of duty to hear Jesus say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. What must have been going on in the disciples' minds and in their heads when they were there and they had just dined and ate and drank and they were experiencing this wonderful out-of-body experience with Christ himself and even thinking about how he turned water into wine they said that Savior is all right with me he blessed the food and fed the multitude that Savior is all right with me they saw him heal and move and operate in the absence of a doctor he became the chief physician they said that Savior is all right with me. They gathered them together and what would the guilty feel like when there it was that lady that was pulled out and said we caught her in adultery and she was wrong and she was the only one caught in adultery. There's something wrong with that equation right there. But when he drew the line in the sand and he showed us what justice really looks like when he said ye without stone just cast the first one and without sin cast the first stone and how would they feel to think about it you know I'm going before a judge but Jesus showed the whole world his mercy and his grace when he was hanging on Calvary and that male factor on one side of him said why do you make mockery of this man seeing that he has done no wrong Lord will you remember me when you get to thy kingdom and the great judge just stopped dying for a minute he resurrected breath for a minute he moved and breathed out of his lungs and can you see how that male factor must have been feeling dying that day to hear the savior in his own weak and in broad in voice say this day thou shalt be with me in paradise and with all of those things there it was, the greatest of those were things that we could see. See, our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' love and his righteousness. That's why Paul told the Corinthian church that if we only have hope in Christ and we are most miserable men, Paul was telling the church that we know that Jesus was crucified. We know that he was born of a virgin. We know that he raised up from the dead. It's not enough that we can hope that he is all right, but we got to know and we got to believe and we got to trust that Christ has risen from the dead. So all of those that were gathered around were there and they had the opportunity to hear him when he said in three days I'm going to tear down this temple and on the third day I'm going to raise it up again when he said that 
this kingdom is not my kingdom because if it were my kingdom my soldiers would have took it by force I could have called in 12 legions of soldiers so with all of the might of the Roman guard with all of the power of Pontius boys with all of the jurisdiction of Caiaphas and all of his legal team there was not enough power on the earth to replace what happened that day at that sepulcher for when Mary and Mary Magdalene and Peter and, and John went to that tomb when they opened up the tomb they saw that his body was no longer there Mary said somebody must have stole that body Peter said, no, nah, I got the guilt in my eyes. I cursed out an old woman. I saw her standing there and I cursed her out and said, I don't know who that Savior is. He said, I made a fool of myself. I won't make it again. I, I was there when that man had his ear cut off and he was crying on the ground and Jesus just scooped down and put that ear back together. So Peter said, I'm not going to accept that somebody has stole his body, but I'm going to go inside that temple. I'm going to go inside that sepulcher. I'm going to go on my knees in prayer. I'm going to go up to that altar. I'm going to get in that word and I'm going to find out for myself. So when Peter looked inside and Peter saw his clothes just folded up together but then on the right Peter saw that napkin that was folded up and lying in a place there by itself God was sending a message to Peter to let him know that that resurrection that early getting up morning was not the end of the story but that resurrection was only the beginning of another resurrection that would come because there's going to be somebody that's guilty that was your resurrection there's going to be somebody whose soul is lost that was our resurrection there's going to be somebody that need healing in their body that was our resurrection there's going to be a family that needs some covering for your house that was our resurrection there's going to be somebody that need grace on the job that was our resurrection there's a senior citizen that needs strength to carry on that was our resurrection because Jesus not only left his clothes there he didn't need the clothes because naked he came in this world naked he leave this world they put purple cloth on him but they saw the clothes neatly folded right there he didn't need their clothes because he was more than the king of the Jews he was more than the king of the Galileans he was more than the hope of the Nazareans he was more than the strength of the Gentiles but he is king of kings and lord of lords and I were everything so when Peter looked down Jesus was speaking right to Peter and let's roll back and determine what was he saying well that was just the last gathering they had they ate together in the room and since it was the Jewish Passover they operated by Jewish rules and ain't it somehow God can take your last bad experience and turn it into a life change and miracle in your life anybody ever made a mistake and it's that mistake that helped you reshape your life where I'm not going back again anybody, anybody ever damaged a relationship and it was that relationship that let me know I'm not going back again anybody ever wasted money and it was that wasted money that let you know that I'm not gonna waste that money ever again you ever ate a bad piece of meat and it was that piece of meat that said I'm not gonna eat that ever again so Jesus took that last experience and he reminded the boys of just what was left in store because when Peter saw that napkin sitting over there all wrapped up by itself that was an indication and a first-rate message from God that everything is gonna be 
all right let me break it down a little further under the Jewish customs when they sit down to eat the placement of the napkin is the determinant of how much business is left at the table if that napkin is spread across that plate at the top of the plate then the father is saying to the hostess that I need something sweet on my plate and bring me a little dessert if that napkin is laid across the top corner of the plate that napkin represent to the hostess that I need you to bring me a little more sweet tea put a little mint on the inside of it so it can tinkle my throat because I got something else to say if that that napkin is balled up and thrown on the floor that's an indication by the head servant that my belly is full bring me a toothpick and let me kick my leg out everything is all right today if that napkin is laid across that man servant's lap that's an indication that I'm still hungry. You brought me a wing, but I'm a big man. I need a wing, a leg, quarter, and a breast. So when Peter walked into that tomb and he saw that the napkin was not across the corner of the plate, he said, Jesus has already thirst. We don't need the thirst again. When he walked in there and he saw that napkin was not laid across the front of the plate, Peter said he has already commenced his spirit unto us so we don't need nothing sweet we good to go when Peter walked in there and he saw that that napkin was not just thrown down that meant that although Jesus came although Jesus went although Jesus died although Jesus was buried and although Jesus got up from that grave there was still some more hope for tomorrow there was still some more strength and praise there was still a day that we can pick up and know that God is on our side so when Peter came in there and that napkin was folded up in that right corner that is the Jewish word to let us know that the meal was fine it was all right the tea was fine it was all right the service was fine it was all right but there is one more thing that the father has to share when that napkin is folded up on the right side of the plate that's a Jewish father sign that I want to tell my family I love them I want to tell my family how good it is to be together I want to tell my family that there's strength in this bond and we got something special so when Peter looked inside that grave and saw that napkin folded up in the right place Peter said not only did he rise but I can rise up again not only did he get up but I can get up again not only is he freeing the world from sin but he's freeing me from sin and I can get up again I can face tomorrow I can call on his name I can walk in his healing I can move and rejoice I can be free in my hands I can be free in my legs I can shout and praise his name although we were guilty although we put him on that cross although our sins were as scarlet don't you know because he got up he washed us and he made us whiter than snow there is a fountain with blood drawn from Emmanuel's face sent us plunged beneath that flood and it washed all our guilty stain if you don't know what I'm talking about let me tell you what's going on you can't get this by hearing about it you can't get this because mama had it you got to do like Peter you got to look in that tomb and you got to see for yourself drugs you may have me now but God not finished depression you may have me now but God not finished seeing you think you got me now but God not finished because when God get through with me when God get through with me when God get through with me I shall rise just like Jesus rise thank the Lord today that that was unfinished business Head to neck. Been stretched across the edge of the plate. 
we would be thirsty looking for a word that can cleanse our soul had the neck been laid across the top of the plate we would still be searching for something sweeter and how many know Jesus is the sweetest name I know had the neck been balled up and thrown in the floor would have meant that Jesus then done what he had to do and so what with us we put him on a cross deal with it but because he put that napkin folded all by itself reminded us that he loves us he's happy to be a part of us he desires that we can be saved and set free and God is not finished with us yet this is Easter this is the day that the Lord has made if your life is going in many directions and you feel like today you're not connected with Christ I'm going to ask that all and God is speaking to your heart and today you have been reminded if Jesus can get up from the cross and a tomb then I can get up from whatever situation I'm dealing with in my life and today God loves you and he wants to raise you up today so if you're here today and you don't know Christ as your Savior. I don't know for sure that I got God moving on the inside. Will you open up and let Christ save you today? If you're here today and you just want to start over. God left that napkin folded so you can have a fresh start. And today you want to operate in that fresh start. Will you come? We're glad to pray with you.